What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by the channel. Today's project is this Honda lawnmower and the problem is we just got this mower working again but it suddenly stopped running and now it won't start again. Let's take a good look at it, find out what's wrong with it and hopefully we can fix it. In this video, we try and repair this mower. However, it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. So in the last video of this particular lawnmower, we found all the problems that it had, one of which was a bad recoil, a sticking throttle and choke cable. We also inspected the carburetor for any possible issues. There also seemed to be a self-propel problem, but we're not going to address it just yet until we know the engine works like it's supposed to. We then started up for a test run and things did not go so well. So the engine started on the first pull, however it was also making a whining noise. It did run for a while, but after adjusting the throttle, the engine puffed out some black smoke and sputtered to a stop, which is never a good sign. Let's see if we can get it started again. So it didn't start back up, but I did hear it make one small pop. I'm pretty sure it's not the carburetor and the gas is fresh from the station, so I don't think there's any water in it. It was also suggested that it could be a valve train related problem, so we'll need to check that out. However, the first thing I want to look at is the whining noise. I think something's hitting the flywheel or the starter cup, so I'll take off the recoil first. So if you look at this stud, you can see a collar on it. This keeps the recoil braced against it and keeps the engine cover from making contact with the engine. But if you look at this stud, you can see there's no collar. So when the nut is tightened down on the recoil, it'll push the cover closer to the engine. Now if we take the cover off, which is also part of the fuel tank, we can see where it's been hitting the flywheel fins. There's not a lot of material missing, so I don't think there's any real damage. At some point, this collar was lost, so we need to replace it. But for right now, I'm going to use a washer to do the same thing until the part comes in. After that we can then replace the recoil assembly and give a test pull to see if it's making any more noise. That looks to fix the whining problem, so next I want to try starting the engine. And to rule out a carburetor problem, I'm going to put some gas into the carburetor's throat and try starting it. Unfortunately, it didn't start, so next I want to check to see if we still have spark by using a spark checker. You can buy these online for just a few dollars. To use it, simply install it in line with the spark plug and pull the rope a few times while watching for an orange glow in the tester. To make this a lot easier, try finding a shady area. I know it can be hard to see on camera without being in a dark room, so I stopped the video. That way you can see that we do have spark. So the tester shows that we have a working ignition system, but it doesn't check for a bad spark plug, so we need to remove it and inspect it for any problems. So here's the spark plug, and it's definitely got some carbon buildup on it, but it's really not that bad. The problem is it's a laser brand, which I've never heard of before. So after I do a compression test to figure out if we've lost compression, I'll be replacing it with a better spark plug. So the reading is about 82 PSI, which sounds low, but this engine has a compression release to make pulling the rope a lot easier, so a low reading is to be expected. I would have liked to have seen a reading above 100 PSI though, but at least it proves we don't have a rocker arm problem. Now since we're here, I want to remove the valve cover and check the valve lash. If the valve lash is off, it could affect the way the engine runs or keep the engine from starting. 
To check the valve lash, I'm going to put my screwdriver in the spark plug hole to feel the top of the piston. Then I'll turn the blade till the piston is at the top of its travel. Now the cam lobe on the gear will pretty much be pointing straight forward as well. Next, I'll use some feeler gauges to check the clearance between the top of the valve stem and the rocker arm adjuster. I normally use a 5000 shim to check my clearance just to see if it's tight or loose, but in the manual I do believe it's 6 thousandths for the intake and 8 thousandths for the exhaust. Just slide the shim between the top of the valve and the adjuster and feel how much it drags between the two. There should be a small amount of drag. This one isn't loose and there's a small amount of drag so the valve lash is fine on the intake. Now on the exhaust side, it's actually a bit loose, which is good since there's supposed to be more clearance. This time I'll pick the correct shim thickness of 8 thousandths of an inch, and this time when I slide it in, there's a tiny bit of drag so I know the clearance is correct. I was actually hoping that the shims wouldn't fit, that might cause the compression number to be a bit low. But since they are correct, I'll replace the valve cover and move on. Now I'm not going to redo the gasket just yet, as I might need to get back in here. Just be aware that if you don't replace the gasket material, you're going to have a leak from the valve cover. Now once I'm finished with this mower, I'll redo the gasket. So my idea is to possibly remove the compression release on the cam. It's that semicircular piece of metal in the middle of all that black plastic. What it does is slightly opens the exhaust valve while the piston is moving upwards trying to build pressure in the cylinder. The release will let some of the air th leave through the exhaust and less pressure will be produced. It sounds great, that is until your engine has some wear on it and then you can't build enough compression to start your engine. Unfortunately, there's not enough clearance to remove the release because it's just too close to the edge of the valve cover mounting surface. If I do decide to do it, I'll have to cut it out instead. So for right now, I'll replace the valve cover and deal with the gasket material later on, and in the meantime, I'll make sure that the rear of the mower is dropped down and the front is set high, that way I don't lose all my oil. So here's the spark plug I'll be using. It's an OEM NGK plug that's been used I think once for a few moments, so it's practically brand new. I always suggest buying OEM plugs if possible, but I understand if you can't get one at that very moment. After the plug is back in the engine, we'll do another test run. And it looks like the new OEM spark plug did the trick, and it looks like the generic laser spark plug failed on us. I understand that NGK spark plugs for this engine are kind of expensive at over $5, but I think they're a quality spark plug, so you get what you pay for. Now that I know this engine is working, I'm going to drain all the fluids out of it because the next part I want to do will have this mower completely upside down for a while, and I don't want to make a huge mess. And besides that, we also need to do an oil change anyway. Another reason why this engine would have stopped on us while it was running would have been valve train failure, like a rocker arm problem, or worse yet, the timing belt breaking. Fortunately, it wasn't either, but if it was, I'm not sure if this engine is an interference engine, and if it is, then we might have had some bent valves to deal with. I think if you keep the oil clean and don't hit any fresh tree stumps or boulders, then I don't think you have to worry about the timing belt breaking. Unfortunately, this is where we need to end the video on this mower, but the next time you see it, we'll be taking a good long look at the self-propel system. So my question is, do you use OEM spark plugs or do you use generic plugs? Or do you think it even matters? Personally, I've used both and haven't had any problems with either one, but just stay away from the laser or torch brand. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions. I hope to see you in the next video.